Vortex describes their Diamondback Tactical as a long-range wolf in sheep's clothing, because it doesn't have fancy features like a zero-stop turret, but it does have bright, sharp XD glass and a first focal plane reticle. Is that enough? Let's find out. We're going to start by quickly taking a look at what you get in the box. Ah, okay, we have a sunshade that screws onto the front. So let's take a look at the scope. We got the scope here. Let's take a look at the rifle scope. Oh, interesting. So Vortex has chosen to go with a bra type cover, um, which I have usually have only seen in older scopes or cheaper scopes nowadays. Everybody's gone to flip up lens covers, but they've gone back to a bra uh, lens cap. So this is uh, all silicone rubber, so that is a little more modern, uh, similar to you would get on your red dots. This provides a bit more protection from bumps as well as more environmental protection for the lenses in terms of dust and uh, and water, moisture getting in. So this had, does have a practical consideration of why they chose to go with the uh, rubber bra on it. And let's take a look at this. This is quite nice. The turrets are lower profile than um, my than uh, my other scopes, um, like my Athlon Argos. I'm assuming that's. For tactical considerations, if you some people mount a secondary optic like a like a micro red dot on top, so having a lower turret is definitely preferable so that you have uh, it doesn't block your field of view. Uh, it has some nice aggressive uh, texturing on the turrets and very tactile. Not as tactile as my Argos, but still, um, you will not mistake when you change your clicks on either the elevation or windage. Very nice, very nice. And I like the fact that um, it has the zero go at uh, the zero uh, lines up and also tells you whether or not you're going right or left on the uh, turret itself. So that is a nice touch on there. And um, the zero is resettable uh, using, uh, well, you just use a, a coin, which is also a nice design touch. Um, you don't have to use an Allen wrench or any other tool to un to loosen up uh, your turret caps to reset them. You just use a coin, which almost everybody has in their pocket. And the side parallax, very smooth. Very, very smooth. It goes from 10 yards all the way up to 300 and infinity. And that's interesting. It turns counterclockwise going from low or close range up to long range. Usually the ones I've tested go clockwise, so this goes anti-clockwise. As and also again the magnification ring very smooth and the reticle focus ring very smooth. Alright, so without further ado, let's go take this out to the range and test it out. I took it to the rifle range and ran 50 plus rounds for 5.56 through my AR and the scope held zero without a problem. Pardon the shaky camera and the through scope footage here, I neglected to bring my scope camera mount so I'm doing this all handheld. But it does illustrate that the scope has a somewhat narrow eye box. I wouldn't quite characterize it as unforgiving, but certainly not what I expected. Now we're going to look at a still frame here so we can look at the image in detail without having to deal with my shaky camera. This is a first focal plane scope, which means that the reticle enlarges as you zoom in. But even at 24 power, the reticle lines are still quite fine and detailed, which is great if you're doing long range shooting to 500 or 1000 yards or more. What we can see here is the kind of clarity and sharpness you can get out of the scope at 100 yards. And we're looking at a set of shoot and see paste up targets. They're six inches in diameter and we can clearly make out the five, five, six hits on those targets as well as a grouping of holes that I printed on paper uh, above the top right target. 
I'd also like to draw your attention to uh, the relative brightness of this scope. You can see it in the image inside the scope versus the brightness of the ambient background uh, of the hillside outside of the scope. As you can see, it is slightly darker, but with most scopes at maximum power, the image is at its dimmest. But what I notice about this scope is that the image is quite clear and bright. This is due to the extra low dispersion glass used in the scope, ED glass, or in Vortex's uh, branded nomenclature, XD glass trademark. You'll see what I mean when I bring the scope down to its lowest magnification setting at six power. When you set a variable power scope to its lowest power setting, you're really seeing the best that the scope can offer in terms of uh, brightness, clarity, and color vibrancy. My camera is automatically refocusing because it's detected movement, but now you can see that the scope itself hasn't changed focus between low and high power. I also know that the brightness hasn't changed all that much between 24 and 6 power, which says a lot about the quality of its XD glass. Let's head over to the San Mateo Sheriff's rifle range where we have a lot more control over the lighting and illumination of our reference targets. And while I have you here, if you've been enjoying the review thus far, I'd like to make a blatant plug for my new channel, Moondog R&D, a channel focused on gadget reviews, photo and video gear, you know, geeky stuff. I'll include a link here as well as in the video description and just invite you to go check it out and please subscribe. Next, we're gonna test out the turrets. Okay, we have the Vortex Diamondback here, and we're just going to look at the range of adjustments on the turrets. This is 6. as far down as it goes. The manufacturer states that there's a total of 65 MOA worth of adjustments in elevation and windage in these turrets, or 19 MRADs in the mill version of the scope. Now I'd like to point out that vignetting you're seeing in the image is not something you'll see with the naked eye through the scope. Right, here is the adjustments on the windage. The vignetting you'll see as we get to the extremes of adjustment are an artifact of the camera mount and my phone camera because phone cameras actually have a much narrower field of view than our own eyes. I also noted just how uh, tactile and loud each of the clicks on the turret adjustments are. Next, I brought up the scope to its maximum 24 power and conducted a box test to see how well it tracks. Full rotation on the elevation. Full rotation on the windage. Full rotation back on the elevation. rotation back on the windage. All right. Pass the box test. And we're going to do the nipple twister now. So I'm just going to randomize. The nipple twister is a test coined by my colorful friend Joe Ria, better known as Cyclops Joe, where you randomly and aggressively turn your turrets and hopefully when you reset them, and we're going to bring it all back your scope returns to its original zero. To zero. And it passed the nipple twister. All right. Let's take a closer look, a more nuanced and detailed look at the optics of this particular scope. We have two reference targets here in frame. The one on the left is a uh, paper target that I've shot previously with a 22, and those are 22 long rifle holes on the paper. There is a two inch bullseye in the center. It's a shoot and see, and we can clearly see the two hits on that bullseye. Uh, below it, we can make out a single 22 um, caliber hole on paper, but what we can say definitively is that we can see even small 22 long rifle bullet holes on paper targets from 100 yards. What we can also see overall is that the image is good. This is as sharp as I was able to get it. There is some noticeable chromatic aberration towards the edge of the image, but that's pretty typical for optics of this um, price range. The white reference target clipped on to the right is the U.S. Air Force's optical resolution chart, and I can make out vertical and horizontal lines down to group negative one on the right column, and the scope can resolve element one, and if I'm being charitable, element two in group negative one, which is pretty good considering that this is better than some budget spotting scopes. 
So there you go. Vortex considers this their entry-level long-range precision scope um, because it is a first focal plane. And I really like the design of its finely etched reticle as well as really good fit and finish on its turrets and externals. And for a budget first focal plane, it's got really good optics, though it does have a narrow eye box, but that's the trade-off. You can find more information about these scopes and where you can get them online at my blog, moondogindustries.com. I'll include a link in the video description. And of course, if you got something out of this review, if you thought it was well put together and you liked it, hit that like button. Or hit the unlike button if you didn't. But either way, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you like this video, please share it on social media. You know, Facebook, forums, MeWe, whatever platform you're on. And if you want to see more videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.